All right, boys. Um, week two of the preseason is almost upon us. Game starts in maybe an hour and a half. And we're going to talk about that, what I'm going to be looking for tonight, uh, hosting the Minnesota Vikings. But before we talk about that, two things have, well, really three things happened this week that seem important, seem like things that we should keep in mind going forward. <clears throat> uh, where do we start? Okay, number one. We signed Tremaine Brock, former cornerback for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, he was facing some domestic violence uh, accusations. Uh, I think the charges got dropped, but he could still get suspended by the NFL potentially. We don't know what's going to happen there. Obviously, if the NFL has any reason to suspend him, they probably will because that's just the way they're handling business right now, which is probably good. But... Looking at him just in terms of his on-field impact, this this is big, people. Tremaine Brock was one of three cornerbacks last season who played, I think it was more than 750 snaps and allowed a catch rate of below 50%. In terms of catch rate, he was clearly better than Deshaun Shedd last year, clearly better than Jeremy Lane last year. So that signing is big, and to get him on a one-year deal for basically the vet minimum is a big, big deal. And putting aside for a second his domestic violence situation, we'll know more about that when the time comes. Um, this is a big get on the field, and it doesn't make me feel good about Jeremy Lane's future because... He's been battling some injuries. He didn't play last week. I don't think he's going to play tonight. He's not played that well since he got his new contract. And um, honestly, this signing makes me feel like he could be on the outs. So great signing. I love it. Hope he plays this year. Hope his legal situation works itself out. That's a big deal. Number two. Excuse me, I'm just getting over being sick, or I'm just getting into being sick. I don't know which it is yet. Um, we finally spent money on an offensive lineman. Justin Britt, yesterday afternoon, signed a three-year extension worth $27 million. Seems about right. You know, it seems like <clears throat> making him one of the six highest paid centers in the league uh, I read a breakdown that said in terms of the money he's making per year, he is now the number six center in the league in terms of money, which seems about right for a guy who's somewhere in the top ten and will hopefully at least get a little better. You know, he probably is going to get a little better. Of course, last year was his first full year starting at center. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but um, one interesting thing about this deal, very little guaranteed money. And that has to excite you if you're concerned at all about how good Justin Britt actually is. <clears throat> and can we get out of this deal later? Because it looks like the answer is yes. So it seems like a fair amount of money. It's a favorable team contract. I like it. <clears throat> I won't say I love it because he's not a Pro Bowl center. He's a very good center who I think has a chance to be great. But he's not great yet. So that's pretty good. Uh, last bit of news is something that's been hanging around for a little while now, but I'll go ahead and talk about it because um, maybe it's not a big deal yet, but it could turn into one. Uh, KJ Wright, he's having some kind of weird out-of-country treatment on his knee, which usually means that thing that athletes go to Germany to do, uh, like, like what Kobe did uh, a few years ago where you go to Germany and they do something with your knees. I don't know exactly what the process is, but basically it sounds... Like, something like that is going on. And um, given that K.J. Wright is one of the best players on this defense, you have to be very concerned about what that says about his season because they're trying to avoid surgery. Obviously, surgery would keep him out for an extended period of time. But um, there are a lot of unanswered questions around the K.J. Wright thing right now. And if you're like me, you can't help but think, well, what's going on with this guy? Because um, we're going to need him. I mean, we we don't even. I don't even know who our third linebacker is going to be this year. We really need KJ and Wagner up the middle there. So, 
those are the three big things that happened this week for me. Thomas Rawls kind of sort of came up in some injury reports like there was a bit of concern there, but I'm not thinking about that yet. So, <clears throat> week two, we're going to see a little more of the starters. We're going to see a little more of the second string. Third string probably takes a back seat this week, waits for week four. We might get a quarter of the starters. We might get a quarter and a half. It kind of depends on how they perform. So, what are we watching for? Well, offensively, obviously, Eddie Lacy. Yeah. I'm watching the Mariners over here again. We're, we're back in it, guys. We won two games in a row. We remember how to win a game again. Playing pretty decent, given that we've had like 45 starting pitchers this year. Anyway, um, Eddie Lacy. We got a lot of good running backs on this team right now. A lot of guys are showing stuff. And in that week one game, Eddie Lacy was not one of them. He, ba he barely played. I'm not blaming him, but I want to see Eddie, Lady, Eddie Lacy justify the money we gave him, the contract we gave him. I want to see him justify him being assumed to be the starter this season because um, I want to – I would hate to know that the one gut running back on this team who has guaranteed money – is somebody who is like the fourth best running back on this team. So, really want to see some stuff from Eddie Lacy. Uh, other names to watch for. Jermaine Effetti. Guys, we have the opportunity to have an okay offensive line this year. A half-decent, somewhat talented, somewhat capable offensive line this year. We've got some guys who played pretty well in week one. Got some guys who seem like they might be coming around, but Effetti is a blocking dummy out there right now, and he's getting abused by a lot of these guys. He was abused most of last season. He was abused in week one of the preseason. We need to see something from him if he wants to start this season, because right now I can think of the best five guys on this team on the offensive line. Right now, if Fetty's not there, and it would suck if a guy we spent a first-round pick on like Jermaine Effetti ended up being a nothing. Um... Other guys on the offensive line you're going to watch, too. Glowinski has some stuff to prove. Uh, Luke Yokel has a starting job that he can win because of Fetty's struggling so much. Fant. Fant seems like he's taken a big step forward this year, but we need to see more of it. Um, and kind of sort of Boykin, but I think we all know Boykin's going to get the backup job, so there's not a ton at stake there. Uh, Kaysen Williams... Paul Richardson looks like he's going to be back sooner rather than later. He's definitely going to be back for week one, but there's going to be some real competition at the bottom of the depth chart for wide receiver. And if Kaysen will, and the more Kaysen Williams shows, the more expendable a guy like Jermaine Curse becomes. And that's kind of weird to say, given that they were teammates for a few years in college, but that's the situation we find ourselves in right now. And I don't know if there's room on this team for Kaysen. That's why he's worth watching. He might be able to make room on the team for himself. And defensively, uh, Terrence Garvin, linebacker who had the pick six last week against the Chargers. We need a third linebacker. Just We're not going to use him that often necessarily, but we're going to need a third linebacker to come out there in base packages. And it could be Will Hoyt. It could be Garvin. It could be a couple other guys that I'm not even thinking of right now. Those are the guys I'm looking out for. Uh, Shaquille Griffin, obviously. Uh, there's still confusion in our cornerback depth area of who's going to be the number two, the number three, the number four, the number five. Where does Shaquille Griffin, the rookie, fit in on that scale against guys like Jeremy Lane and eventually Deshaun Shedd and now Tremaine Brock? I did not mind what I saw from him in week one. Got to see more from Shaquille this week. And I guess you would also say Nazir Jones after what he did last week, of course, because there's a gap in our defense for something like that now. All right, guys, uh, game about an hour away. I'll make a video probably tomorrow sometime. And um, let, let's get this done, whatever this may be. I don't know if it's winning. I don't know if it's looking good, but... There are some guys to hone in on in this week two of the preseason, and I just basically went over everything that interests me. All right, see you guys.